Hey everybody, I've tried to make this video so many times and I'm having nothing but issues. Let's pray that I can get through this one. These are the pocket pillows that I've been making and one of the things that um, I've been doing is uh, the stippling with the embroidery designs. I just find it to be a beautiful finish. It feels nice, it feels luxurious, it feels rich. The secret to this is the red material is the most inexpensive. It's something I've probably bought at um, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, or Joann's for clearance. The back fabric, I can guarantee you, I have the bolt sitting in there. It was $1.50 a yard at Walmart. The zippers, <laughs> I have a whole box of them over there. They were, when Hancock's went bankrupt, I got a ton. and. There's an 18 by 18. The most expensive thing on this pillow is the insert. It's an 18 by 18 insert, and then this piece of fabric for the front. I tend to um, like to use plain fabric for my pockets because it's, like I say, the inexpensive fabric that I have. The nice, luxurious, I mean, this is, I don't know whose this is, but it feels nice. And then the inexpensive for the back because it's the back of a pillow. Half the time my zippers aren't even the same color, you know. Look at this one is beige. Um, I'm using up what I have. So if you're going to do an 18 by 18 inch pillow, you're going to want this front piece to be 19 by 19. You're going to want the back piece to be 19 and a half by 19. 19 this way, 19 and a half this way. What you're gonna do is, for the back piece, you're gonna cut a piece off, if you're putting a zipper in, about seven to eight inches down, or in the middle. The first few I did were in the middle. I just sliced it in the middle. Then, to put the zipper in, what you do is take, I, I'm gonna do a very small one, because I've done so many of these, and I'm just getting really mad at myself, so. What you do is you take your two pieces, see how you can see right through this fabric, take your two pieces and fold under a quarter of an inch and steam press it. And if you have starch, use it. This is um, the best starch in the world. I like best press a lot and I have a lot of it that I bought when um, Hancock's had it for $6 a bottle or less, but I don't have Hancock's anymore. Uh, this um, faultless starch, I bought this at Sam's. I think there were six in there. I can't remember the price. Um, you want the gold cap. You definitely want the gold cap. Um, it does not uh, flake. I saw Missy Billingsley did a video not long ago, and she talked about it, and it, oh, it was like, why did I quit using faultless? I don't remember stopping. I think it was when I found Best Press. I, I love the smell and of Best Press and how it worked. And I went back and bought this faultless, and I've gone through a can almost in the last two weeks. And I love the smell of it too. So starch it a little bit and put press under a quarter of an inch on both pieces, top and bottom. Then you have your zipper. You want your zipper to be bigger than your project. For the 19 inch back that I've got here, I've got a, probably a 24 inch zipper. That way, when you put the zipper together, you've got several inches on either side. I'm having a hard time recording here because I, my iPhone's a little smaller area than my GoPro. It ran out of charge. So what you do is you take the piece that has the pressed side down, that's the wrong side of the fabric, and you're going to lay it on your zipper, and you're going to make sure you have extra on either side. You don't want the zipper pull to get in your way. I have the zipper foot on. It's the eye in your Destiny and Dream Machine. To take it off and put it on, that little button back here, you push it. Then on the the zipper foot. If you want to use the left side, you need to connect it on the bar on the left. If you want to use the right side, you connect it to the bar on the right. You just, I just uh, set it under and then 
I push the button for the foot to go down. When I don't get it the first time, I just move it. There, I finally got it. And now it's on. Then I've got uh, number three stitch chosen because that puts it right where it's not touching, but it's right next to the edge of the hole on the inside. You turn your hand wheel and if it touches, do not sew. You will break a needle and you may throw your timing off. So with the zipper foot on and your needle threaded, you take, if I put this piece here on, I want it to be so many inches away on both sides. Then, actually I wanna turn this around, I'm sorry. I could sew it that way. And I do not want it right next to the zipper teeth. I want it a little bit away. That's not an eighth of an inch, but it's not that far from it. I do not want the fabric covering the teeth of the zipper because if it covers, what's gonna happen when I unzip it, it's going to catch in the zipper. And then I'm going to sew and reverse. That will lock my stitches. Go to the end, sew and reverse, lock my stitches. Okay, then I take the other piece and I set it on top and I want the two edges to be close on both sides. I want them to be so that they're not wonky. If you put it on, you could actually put it like this and then just move it up so that you're not gonna have to trim a bunch of fabric off, okay? Then sew, back tack, back tack. Now, your zipper is on the backing. It doesn't get caught. Looks good. You could press it if you wanted to. This zipper's been used before, so there's a little pieces of red thread. <laughs> but now to make the pillow, there's two ways. The way I do it with the, um, we're going to do it with the zipper first. You're going to take the front piece of material and lay it down. And you're going to have yours ironed nicely. This has been moved around and folded so much that I would, I would iron it. I don't like anything that's not ironed. Then you take your pocket to the pillow and you lay it on and you match up your sides because everything's been cut down. The pocket itself is any amount you want. Mine is probably 12 inches, so it shows the top of the fabric somewhat. Then you're going to take your zippered back and you're going to lay it with the zipper pull down on top. And you're going to match up all your sides because everything's now been cut. You've taken it to your cutting board and everything is now 19 by 19. So if it needs any squaring up, you squared it up. Then you're going to go ahead and pin it. And where your zipper pull is, I would pin this one side. Then take this, open it up a little bit, unzip it, flip it back over, pinch the teeth to where they are right together, and put a pin. Then you're going to pin all the way around, and you're going to sew with a half an inch seam all the way around. When you get to the zipper, it's going to be quite close to the pocket edges. So what you're going to do is back tack, I'd say five or six times over the zipper and the pocket because the pocket's going to have wear and tear. And you're going to sew down, over, up, back tack several times here. Okay. If you want to make the other pillow, which is where we're going to stuff it, instead of this backing, 
what you're going to use is a plain piece of fabric that is cut 19 by 19. If you have an 18 by 18 inch pillow, you're going to lay it on top. You're going to match up all your edges properly. You're going to pin it all the way around. And at the top, you will leave, and I always put two pins together, and you're gonna leave an opening six to eight inches, and you're going to, I always put two pins so that I know that's where I have to stop. Now on the side where the pocket is, I put two pins, and I know to back tack over it a few times because there's going to be wear and tear on the pillow in that area. Then you're gonna sew from the top pins here, go all the way down, and you're going to go all the way across, all the way back up, back tack where you've got the two pins here at the seam for the pocket, and when you get to your other two pins at the top, you're going to put a little back tack in and stop so you have an opening. Then, if it needed squared up anymore, if, you, if you're off a little bit, Go ahead and take it to your um, cutting table and cut off any bad edges. Because you can see there's a little extra right there. That doesn't bother me. Cut your corners off. You know, you just take and cut the tips of the corners off, which is, makes it a little neater. Then you're going to turn it right side out. Now, if you had a zipper, you're going to turn it right side out and you're done. You're going to stuff the pillow in and seal it up. But this would be for stuffing a pillow. You're going to open it up, poke your corners out. I would use uh, a turning tool. I don't tend to use my scissors so much anymore as I used to because I have poked through my fabric before. I'm good at doing stuff like that. Poke your corners out. Now you see where the top of your pillow is. It has a tendency to go in naturally. A lot of times I might even do a three quarter inch seam on the top just so that it goes in nice like this. And before I stuff it, what I'll do is take it to the ironing board and press it. And that way there, it's gonna go in on its own and you're gonna whip stitch it. I'm hoping everyone knows how to whip stitch. What you do is you take a needle and thread, tie a knot, you would reach in with the needle and go behind your stitches a few inches and pull the thread out, like this is your needle. You would um, go back here, a little, just a, you know, a tad, and pull your knot through, and that hides your knot, and then you stuff your pillow and you just, go like this and you take your your needle and you just go like that until you get to the end and then you go back underneath and bury a knot pretty easy huh now to make the um pocket i've got the videos that we've um i've had on just really quickly for anyone who hasn't seen them what you do is take you can do it two ways well, more than two, but here's two ways. You can cut fabric. This is always cut bigger than what I need in the end. If I need a 19 by 19 um, pillow, I might cut this 24 by 24 if I'm going to do it where I have a solid piece of fabric that is 24 by 24, and I would hoop this side, because you gotta remember the direction. You have to remember that. I would hoop this side, then you will hoop it with a layer of no-show, a layer of batting, and a layer of top fabric. You can also put a bottom layer and sew through if you don't care if the, the backing shows with the embroidery, but to make it neater, what I would do is have it out like this and I would hoop this side, I would 
put the embroidery. I didn't do stippling on these because, long story short, uh, I thought I was done. It was 2 in the morning, and I popped it out of the hoop, and I didn't feel like messing with it anymore. I know I can go back in with my camera and fix it. Okay, so you would have this uh, 24 by 24, one whole piece. You would hoop it. You would have no batting over here. It would just be a few inches longer than what you needed to get it hooped. Sew out your embroidery, then turn your fabric, cut the extra batting and stabilizer off. Then you just fold your fabric over, and voila, you would have a finished back, and you have your embroidery. If you forget, and or you want different fabric like I do, because let's say I'm using high dollar fabric here, and I've done this on several of these pillows, I've used the um, Kona type fabric, which at the quilt shop might be $12 a yard, so that it's a thicker, nicer um, fabric. I don't know, this is a th an inexpensive fabric, but if I were using, I've, I have used expensive fabric for the embroidery area, so I would cut that like 14 by 24. I would do my embroidery with a layer of no-show, a layer of batting, and my top fabric. Then I took a piece of fabric that was inexpensive fabric, and I laid it on top, and I did the wave stitch. Can you see the wave stitch? Isn't that beautiful? That's made with a baby lock serger that has wave stitch capabilities. If you don't have that, you could take the fabric and you could put it right sides together like this and you put a seam here. Then all you do, you put a seam at the top here. Then all you do is flip it and iron it, okay? Another thing that you could do, and I have some made, another thing that you can do is take bias tape and take, you could sew real quick, just put the back on, sew a seam, you know, like an eighth of an inch in, just so it's tacked together. And you take bias tape, the, there's, you can buy the pre-made, um, I've got a whole bunch of it over there. And this is homemade, but you would um, put your bias tape, sew it down, and make a decorative edge. That's an easy way if you don't have a serger. Or the easiest way is, like I said, where you take a piece of fabric and you put it on top sew a seam, flip it over, and you got a backing. Okay, I'm going to remake this video, but I'm going to post this one for now just because I've had so many problems, and I know people want to get this made, and I'm so terribly sorry that it's taken a while, um, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know, and um, I'll see you soon. I think the next thing I'm going to do is some pillowcases. How's that sound? Talk to you soon.